I want to share a few extra words with you all. We have 30 minutes left, so I just want to share a few different words with you all. And then we're going to cut out, and then we're going to give you all a chance to network, all right? Got a cash giveaway to give away tonight. I'm going to be a man of my word. All right, so I want to talk to you all tonight about the power of belief, all right? The power of belief. This is key. Now, um, as you've been building your real estate portfolio after, for 40 years, you have to have some level of belief that you can do it, right? Some point or another. So, we're gonna go over this definition of belief, and then I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about it. So it's two definitions I'm gonna kind of focus on. We have an acceptance that a statement is true or that something exists, all right? A person that has belief in their the value of their hard work. Number two, this is the definition I wanna focus on the most. A trust, faith, all right? This word belief, we're going to be, it's gonna be interchanged with faith tonight. Trust, faith, or confidence in someone or something, all right? How many people in here have belief in themselves? That's all right, you can throw your hands up. You know, I know sometimes it seems like, you know, you, you, you're violating some spiritual principle if you say, I believe in myself, all right? We understand that you believe in the most high, the higher power, but you have to believe in yourself as well. So let's continue. Do you believe in the Most High? How many people in here believe in the Heavenly Father? All right, he's got two hands up back there. Like, yeah, I believe, I really believe, all right? So, but if I was to say, if we was in a room, we was in a ballroom, a conference room, and I would say, how many of you all believe in yourself? It would be fewer hands that go down, it would be fewer hands up when it comes to believing in yourself than believing in your higher power. All right, and there are different reasons behind that. Different reasons why individuals do not believe in themselves. Some individuals, they suffer from an inferiority complex. Your environment, they say you are a product of your environment. Some people grew up on Section 8 and welfare. Some people, they can't see themselves going further than their city, than their community, than their state. Believe it or not, there's some people born here in Kentucky and they never left outside of Kentucky. You have to believe in yourself. All right? Now, for those people that read the good book, the Bible, the scriptures, it said all things are possible to them that believe. This is what the Messiah taught his disciples. So all things are possible. It didn't say some things. It said all things are possible if you believe. So this is what I want to share with you all tonight is to try to build your belief up because Dr. Reese, when you've been out here, you know, building your you know, chiropractic practice, you know, was every day easy? No. Every day smooth for you? No. Your diet there and was every day smooth for you when you were building your massage therapy? No. It's not easy, right? Not at all. So, did you have to believe in yourself? Yes. Even when the critics were talking about you? Yes. Even when they told you to get a safe, secure job? Yes. You had to believe in yourself. I know George had to believe in himself. You're talking about going back to the 1980s, right? Let's continue. But, not just any type of belief. We need a childlike belief. The master teacher again said, unless you be like a child, you will not enter into the kingdom. We have to have that type of childlike belief. So what does a child um, believe in? They believe in their father. If they have a father in their life, they're gonna believe that no one can take on that father. They're gonna believe he's the strongest and most powerful man. And they have a belief that if they jump and take a leap, their father is going to catch them. How I know this? I just so happened to have a few girls. And one of them was standing at the top. I'm going to talk about in our house in Ohio. And she jumped, she went to about eight steps up. And just, before I could even say, hey, 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 she just took off and jumped because she knew I was going to catch her. How many of us have that type of belief that our heavenly father is going to catch us? if we take the leap into entrepreneurship. All right, just a few of us, that's okay. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> now, I'm not knocking the one because guess what? It's even a person in the scripture that said, I believe, but help my unbelief. We have those moments to where you're on top of the world today, and tomorrow you feel like the world is on top of you. Individuals are supporting you one day, and they're talking about you the next day. This is what entrepreneurship is about, all right? But there's a word in Hebrew, for those that, that, that tap into the Hebrew language and tongue, all right? Substitute the word belief with faith. 
And faith, the Hebrew word for faith is amunah. Amunah means to act on one's belief. It's enough to just say, I believe, I believe. How many people that go to church every single Sunday say, I believe, I believe, but they're not able to pay their bills? On Saturday, Sabbath, how many people say, I believe, I believe, but they're behind? We have to act on our belief. When we have an idea, if you come up with an idea tonight, do not wait till tomorrow to act on it. Do something towards the activity tonight. I don't care if it's just taking a single step towards it. I don't care if, it, if, that's, if that goal has to be good, get down and do 100 push-ups. Do 20 of them tonight. Start your LLC. Do a little extra research. All right? Act on your belief. Belief is the master key for wealth, health, and other forms of prosperity. Belief is a master key because if you don't believe that you're able to be successful, you're not going to be successful. You can go to seminars, you can go to workshops, you can go to church every single week. If you don't believe it in yourself, it's going to be important. So, my question is, who are you listening to? Because in the book of Hebrews, it says that faith cometh by what? Hearing. Hearing and hearing the word of the Most High. But it's not just hearing the word of the Most High. Faith comes by hearing, period. The voices that you listen to over and over and over again, they dictate the outcome of your life. That's why we have to be very intentional and deliberate about who is going into our fertile ground right here. That's why I tell you all, I told you all before, I don't listen to music. Some people say, well, man, you should listen to gospel music. You listen to music. I don't listen to no music. I listen to audio books. I listen to podcasts, I listen to personal development, personal growth, because that's what I want in my fertile ground. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That's what I want to come out of me. All right? Everyone's different. Belief comes by hearing. Are you listening to the negative voices of your family members and friends? Are you listening to the coworkers that told, that told you, you don't need to start your business, you need to just stay here with us for 30 or 40 years? Are you listening to the voices that tell you, don't listen to anything George just told you because he don't know what he's talking about. Are you listening to those voices? Are you listening to the voices that says, after this meeting is over with, I need to go sit down and get his phone number? Are you listening to the voices that say, well, yes, even though it was a small group of people tonight, there's something that I can extract from this meeting. What are you listening to? Whose voice are you listening to? And I want to say this one more time. It is according to your belief. When the Messiah walked through the town and he healed the individuals, what did he say? According to your belief. According to your belief. This is what he did with the people. He touched and agreed with their belief. He didn't force them. He didn't have to coerce them. He didn't have to make them be healed. He said, I'm touching and agreeing with you. So when someone comes to me and they ask me to pray for them, I ask them, do you believe that he's able to do it? And if they say that he's able to do it, then I'm touching and agreeing with you. And the, and the prayer and the prayer and the words that I say are just extra because they're added with your belief. All right? It's according to your belief. All right, so a few more things I want to share with you. Um, I, kind of, I kind of breezed through that a little faster than I thought I was. I want, to, I, want to, I want to deal with the works aspect for a second because a lot of us have great ideas. How many of us have an idea here, but we didn't put no action to it? No action to it, right? And how much? And, and have you ever came had an idea and you didn't do nothing about it? Then six months down the road, someone stole your idea. <laughs> They're getting paid for it. How many people? How many people were sitting at home and you had them little blankets around you and you wrapped them around you and, and you thought about well maybe if I cut some sleeves in this, somebody made, made millions of dollars off of that, <laughs> off the idea acted upon. So we have to act upon these ideas that we have. And I want to give a couple of examples of people that actually went towards their belief real quickly. According to your belief. I know of an individual, personally, a couple of individuals. I'm going to share some stories and I'm going to close up right here. So I know of an individual that was staying in a house. This was a woman. She was staying in a house with her son, her child. All right? And she, and she felt out of place at that place. That was, she was staying with family. Family was looking out, letting her stay there, right? But she started to begin to feel uncomfortable being at this place. 
And until you become uncomfortable, you're not going to do nothing different. Is that right, George? You have to be uncomfortable with debt. You have to be uncomfortable with your circumstances. You have to be uncomfortable with the naysayers. She began to be uncomfortable staying in her family member's house. And she said, you know what? She prayed and she wanted more. And guess what? As she was out driving, she got led to a street. She heard a voice leading her to a street, leading to a street, leading to a street. And she ended up coming up on a property. Abandoned property that didn't have no signs on the, no for sale sign, anything. And it turned out to be the house that she would later on live in. I know another person, a young man. He was a, he was decided that I am, it's time for me to leave. He stayed with um, a family member as well. And he had it in his mind, even though he had people close to him saying, it would probably be best for you just to kind of stay here and stack your money up. But he was so determined that he saw a bigger picture and a bigger light, and he took the leap. And guess what he started doing? He did the same thing that this other woman did. He started packing up his clothes. He started putting them in garbage bags, putting all his items to the side. He was, he was basically just sleeping with just a few pair of clothes. And then, right when it looked like nothing was going to happen for this person, the floodgates opened up, and he was, now he's living in a, a luxury place. This is according to your belief. I'm an example myself. The last 13 to 14 years, I've been living off of belief. I've not had a job in 13 to 14 years. Now, I'm not telling nobody not to, get, not to have a job. Keep the job. Please, I don't want to tell nobody to get rid of the job. Because your job helps fund your business. When you do it the way I did it, sometimes people can feel the desperateness of you. When, uh, especially in the earlier years of being out here, being an entrepreneurship. You don't want to come across as being desperate. You want to have cash flow coming in so that when you sit down with the individual, it's whether they want your offer or not. You're going to keep on going. And that's what finances do to you. It gives you a little more, more strength, a little more wiggle room in the game. So I just want to tell you all that you have examples here of individuals that have been walking in belief. There's a book right here. I want everyone, if you can, add it to your library. It's called The Magic of Thinking Big. This book right here is going to take you to a whole different stratosphere in your thinking. All right? You can put two people in the same occupation. You can put two people in the same place. You could drop them off right there, and you could come back 10 years later or five years later. One person is making half a million dollars a year, the other person is making $50,000 a year. What's the difference in the, in the person making 10 times more than the other person? It is that person's belief. He believed that he was able to go on and make half a million dollars a year. Now, I know money's not everything, but they say rank up there with oxygen. You're not gonna get too far without it. So, it's according to your belief. So I just want to encourage you all today to believe that you are able, no matter what your circumstances look like, no matter where you came from, no matter what your education level is like, whether you have a PhD or a GED, a good enough diploma. Believe that as long as you have your Heavenly Father with you, you have more than everything you need that this world can offer you, and you have everything it takes to, to be another George Ford. If I was to sit down and talk to George, if George was to have more time with you, he would probably tell you there's nothing too much special about me. But then I got a hold of some knowledge. I got a hold of some information. I believed in myself. I believed that I could acquire a property and more property and 20 properties. And you can as well. All right, so when you look at that person in the mirror, no matter how many failures you've had in life, look at yourself and say, I believe that I'm able to do what my Heavenly Father put me here.